What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Dave. I'm a photographer from the Bay Area of California, but today I'm out here in the desert. So a few weeks ago, I got a DM from Ansley Stewart, who's currently over there somewhere. You'll meet him in a minute. Inviting me out here to Borrego Springs and the surrounding area to do some shooting together. So I drove all the way down here and it is a long drive. California is a big state. What I want you to learn today though, isn't about like how good photography can look in the desert. We already all know that. It's about the fact that I am not in Death Valley. I am not in Mojave. I'm not in Yosemite or the Sequoias or any other of these epic locations. I'm not in any of those places. I'm actually in a state park. And locations like this are, as you can see and we'll see today, completely empty. And what if instead of trying to go to all of the most epic places that you've seen on Instagram a million times, what if you tried finding a place like a local state park or somewhere that is off the beaten path and go check that out for your photography? That's what we're gonna do today. I have never been here. Ansley, have you been here? Ansley's been here. Do you expect we'll see a lot of people today? Probably not. It looks like we're gonna have this place to ourselves. All right, this is my buddy Ansley Stewart. We just met yesterday, so we go way back, a good 24 hours. <laughs> but no, like Ansley is a guy that I've met through YouTube and through Instagram, incredible photographer. I actually posted, I guess it was a couple weeks ago that I thought you are the most underrated photographer that Sorry. I've seen. And I stand by that because his work is absolutely incredible. He is like one of the most incredible and inspiring film photographers I've seen. I found out yesterday that Ansley's been shooting film since December. <laughs> Also, Ansley has more film in the cooler in his truck than your local camera shop has. You got like what, like 50 rolls of vision? <laughs> like oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've got like 100 rolls in the cooler right now. I guess if you immerse yourself in something, you just get good at it. <laughs> like it's a 10,000 hour rule. To like get around Kodak's price increases. Oh, okay. Not yeah, really that's often. that's smart. That's smart. <laughs> so this is Ansley and you can follow him at the link right below. We're going to be taking his Ford Raptor into the desert. We just took the air out of the tires or I say we. Ansley just took the air out of the tires. And look, I mentioned that we're in the state park and you know, sometimes it's like worth going out and exploring places like this that you wouldn't necessarily fine on Instagram, but there is sometimes a bit of a accessibility issue to getting to places like this. We're going to go a few miles back here. Six or seven. Six or yeah. seven miles down this crazy road. Today I'll be shooting the M11, the Hasselblad 500CM, the M6. I also brought my point and shoot Canon short shot that I had in high school. Ansley, what are you shooting today? Probably my M6, the Mamiya 6.7. I think that's what I'm going to focus on. All right, so we're going to get on the road. All right, so we're like four or five miles back down this wash. Ansley is a former racing instructor. Apparently we are racing <laughs> through the wash. Our opponents are imaginary. <laughs> they are life and health. That's our opponents right now, because those three things are against us. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> It's an anticline, so it's where two plates come together and have squished each other enough that it, the pressure and everything involved has squished the rock and curved the rock. I think it's pretty wild to see it on display. I mean, what's that, 100 feet tall or whatever? Makes you feel really tiny. Yeah, that's crazy. I can't even get the whole thing on the damn camera. So as we're continuing down the wash here, we're kind of just stopping along the way at any spot that's got interesting midday light. I feel like a lot of photographers, they want to go out and shoot at golden hour or in the right conditions when the lighting's really good. I've been really challenging myself every time that I can to try to make the most intense light in situations work because, you know, if you only shoot during golden hour, you miss out on basically the whole day. The like layer of this, I think it's called mud shale is holding up all the sandstone. Like that layer is just crumbly mud shale. It's holding up all that sandstone. That's crazy. <laughs> Wild. Uh, 
I think this is probably a good place to turn around, to be honest, because we have this ability to kind of spin. But, oh, yeah, there's that boulder. Hello. Dude. Yeah, I don't know about that. I'm a daredevil, but I ain't that dairy. I'd like to be able to get home tonight. Yep. So we've been driving back into Sandstone Canyon. We got the truck about as far as we think we can take it. And uh, today's video is sponsored by Ford. <laughs> Just kidding, Ford Tough. <laughs> Both Ansley and I are shooting digital and film. A lot of times when I go out, I don't know about you, but I'm gonna have you chime in on this. I get lazy and I just pick the one camera and shoot it. And most of the time it's the M11. But I feel like on this trip, I have been really good about switching between the Hasselblad and the M11 and the M6 and even my point and shoot. You are a hybrid shooter. You shoot the GFX, you shoot your M11, your M6, the RZ67. What else you got in there? Is that it? That's it. Okay. Now. How do you navigate carrying multiple cameras and trying to balance between them all. I think it's one of those things, especially learning film right now, I'm trying to do better about bringing enough so that I have a, a, a wide range of results when I come home. And then I'm gonna continue tailoring that down and whittling it down, like right tool for the job, especially if you're coming you know, halfway across the country or something, like I think it's kind of worthwhile to take more than you need and make sure that you get everything that you want. I, it's always kind of funny to hear people complain about folks with different cameras because there's not a whole lot of musicians that have one guitar. Guitars always brought out different vibes. I liked using different guitars for different songs, like that sort of thing. And I kind of feel like cameras, any of those creative mediums, same sort of way. All right, as we driven back even further, we hit this like very lush area with some jumping cactuses and agave plants and other cactuses. I'm not sure what their names are. And these other trees that I don't know what they're called either. Scrubs. <laughs> Historically, I don't want no scrubs, but I'm here for the scrub today. Hey, you're hanging out the... It's true. I'm hanging out the passenger <laughs> side of my best friend's ride. We're gonna shoot a little bit around here and uh, I'm gonna use the, probably the M11 a little bit as well as the Hasselblad. With the M11, I'm gonna put the 50 on and do some close focus. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. I've been thinking all day about like this experience and how like being out here without people and truly immersed into a natural environment is really what the parks are about. This is true of the national parks too, except the national parks are kind of like Disneyland now, or at least the ones in California are. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I want people to go out and experience those parks. And I was fortunate enough to experience them before the COVID surge that we're still living in today. But there's something really special about being in nature. And I'm gonna get quiet for a moment. And I'm gonna put the camera just focused on what I'm looking at. And I want you to listen. I'm gonna turn the mic up so you can hear for yourself what I'm experiencing. Let's check it out.
If you've been around my channel for any length of time, you've heard me say this quote, the two things greatly affect the heart, beauty and adversity. And we live in a world where adversity is constant. And the only way we can keep our hearts sane and in a good place is to experience beauty. But that old cliche saying that beauty is in the eye of the beholder means that everyone truly does have access to beauty. So whether you find that in nature or in the quiet, like I'm finding it right now, or you find it in your city, or maybe the countryside not far from you. Wherever you are, if you're watching this, that means you have access to technology in a way that you can find some beauty nearby. And I would just encourage you, for your own heart's sake, to go out and experience some beauty. All right, Ansley has been out where I cannot see him for a good 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go look for him and make sure that he did not fall down that cliff over there. There he is. Bro, I've been looking for you for like 15 minutes. Oh, really? I, I, I even went up there. Uh, I went on the top here and I was I was like, <laughs> and I didn't hear anything. I couldn't, I didn't see you anywhere. I was like, oh my God, what did this dude like collapse from dehydration or something? No, that's what the fat's for. Okay, okay, so you got it. You got it covered. Yeah, I'm marinating in the sun. All right, guys, we are at Fonts Point, right outside of Borrego Springs. We're gonna be shooting here, but it is very windy. I'm currently using the truck as a windscreen to protect this microphone from getting too crazy. We'll be shooting here for golden hour and into sunset and twilight. I think you guys are gonna love this spot. Just given the wind, I'm not gonna really uh, talk much more for this next section, but you guys can definitely enjoy the views. Right, guys i hope you enjoyed this video out here in the borrego area be sure to follow ansley back there there he is i like, don't follow him right now because you might fall off a cliff but be sure to follow him to see his photos as well hope you guys had an awesome time along with us this was an incredible spot man look i've, I've been to bryce canyon and the grand canyon and a bunch of other canyons here in the u.s but this is about i think as good as it gets and there's no crowd like that was the best part I mean, there were a handful of people here, but you had all of this to yourself. Like, how amazing is that? So don't come out here. Stay home. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>